Mr. Adishino, why is it that we have not heard from this president on so many issues directly? You know, Nigerians are really wondering, why is it that there seems to be a kind of a, a, a lack of openness in terms of direct communication between the president and the people, uh, being able to interact with him and get his thoughts on the very burning issues facing the nation? It's a matter of style. You have your style. This is a, well, good Yusuf has a style. I have my style. The president has his. That is the style he has chosen to adopt. The, what matters is that when the country needs information, they get it and there are different channels to pass information no. to Nigerians. While you say that's a style, others will say it's an institutional issue, that the, that it, the president is, that he, it's an institution as opposed to a person and that the standards of the institution dictate that the man occupying the office would engage with Nigerians in a way that is direct, in a way that is transparent, and that this is something we have seen throughout time, even under military dictatorships. In view of that, is it something that you think could be modified so that Nigerians have better insight into the thinking of the man who controls the affairs of the country? What would you then say of a president that takes to Twitter and tweets everything, even before those who are in government with him will know about it? That's the style he has chosen to adopt. This is the style of our president. We know the president is a reticent man. When he needs to speak, he speaks. And this is how he has designed his communication. There is Elaji Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information for Government Communication. There are those of us in his media team for communication of things happening in the presidency. And there are other channels down the line. That is what the president has designed. And let's just accept that that is the way he wants it. And we will come to a time that he needs to speak directly with Nigeria, so he will do it. Well, we've, we've heard uh, the, the rumblings, obviously the international media, particularly the Financial Times reporting that uh, United States President Donald Trump uh, told his aides that uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is, in quote, lifeless, and that uh, he warned them that he never wants to meet uh, such a lifeless person again in his life. And that's, of course, very insulting, but what is the response of the president and the presidency uh, to that quote? Channels is a television station rep reputed for news and objectivity. If that came to you, that information, not ascribed to anybody, not verified, would you take it as authentic? If it's unverified as it came out, then the presidency has no comment on it. No, no concerns that that, uh, that quote, e even though clearly it's something that was quoted by the, uh, the, the Times, the Financial Times, that even though it's, it cannot be verified, no it, concerns and it does that... And it does not pass all the tests of good journalism. It uh, does not. Right. Yes. Does it, do you have any concerns, though, that it could have a kind of a, a, a carryover effect in terms of public opinion ahead of an election? No, no, it won't. Because Nigerians ultimately are the ones that will elect their president. No, no, no foreign power will determine who gets elected. That, that, that does not worry us. One, because it's unsubstantiated, it's unverified. Anybody could have planted it. We know that in the jostle for power, people can do anything. Now, we've heard, obviously, the, the latest report from the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, yes. the slowdown of the GDP from the last quarter to this one. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that, and what do you say to Nigerians who are worried that the economy is trending in the right direction? Yeah. In the uh, wrong direction, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It, could, it couldn't be in the wrong direction. There could be slowdown, and the report was clear oil prices affected from 1.9 to 1 1.5. Uh, but if you look at it, there is a silver lining in that report because non-oil sector went up. But if, if, the, if the fluctuation, the, the downward fluctuation in the oil price and production uh, influenced the drop in GDP, even though, like you said, there was a nominal uh, kind of increase in yeah. the non-oil sector's contribution, it still leads to the fact that we are still very much overly dependent on, 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 that, on that product. Yes. What are your thoughts? That's the truth. That's the truth because it's going to take a while before we wean ourselves off the overt dependence, dependence on oil. It's going to take a while, but we're on the road to it. 
Mm. You know, one of the things I found very interesting during the holidays was uh, President Buhari receiving youth corps members uh, in Daura. He was quite excited to, I mean, it was one of the very rare moments. He even tweeted about it. I think the M. Buhari handle yes. tweeted about it, yes. you know, saying that he had commended, uh, you know, former head of state, Yakubu Gowon, for instituting such a laudable initiative. Yes. And, you know, he, he made the coppers feel very welcome. They seemed very excited to receive him. But I'm sure that, you know, this also, you know, goes back to the silence of the presidency on a matter that has to do with NYC certificate of one of its ministers. Why has there been this long silence from the uh, federal government on that matter? Two, two things. One, it was not the first time the president was meeting the coppers. In fact, this is about... Yes, yeah, a tradition. It, yes. It, I'm building up. It's about the third or fourth time he will be meeting youth coppers serving in Daura. So he does that anytime he goes for holiday. Then the second part of your question, you use the word silence. That can be right. Silence means you say nothing. Wasn't well, government spoken a couple of times? What did government that say? Of, co of course, NYC has spoken. It's an agency of government saying it is investigating. The Minister of Information, Elijah Lai Mohammed, has spoken a couple of times on this matter. So I wouldn't call that I silence. I would remind you what... Unless uh, you want to say it's a loud moment, silence. I'll, I would remind <laughs> you what al Lai Mohammed said. Yes. He said the NYC was investigating. Good. And that the NYC is a part of government. Good. And it has taken how long now to investigate well, this matter? Not how long, but how well. And that wouldn't qualify how, for silence. How well is this? I mean, <laughs> the well, we will only know when it eventually comes to light. It, yes. And uh, they issue a statement I'm on it. Um, I'm sure NYC also has a spokesperson that you can follow up with. You have heard the president's advisor on corruption, uh, Mr. Isha Sage, who was quoted as saying, who cares about an NYC certificate? A personal uh, Is opinion. that the stance of the president? No, no. I mean, if this is somebody who's advising the president on corruption matters, yes. shouldn't we take his, uh, it his was, comment uh, no, no. seriously, uh, it was, personal it, it or was not? A, it was a personal comment. That's not the position of government. And Professor Sage has a right to his opinion. Definitely he yes. does. It, mm. is, do you think that is the advice that he's currently no, no. given? No, 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 no. The government. No, After no, all, no. he's a presidential uh, uh, advisory it, committee. No, no. It did not, it did not be down the alley of Professor Sage to advise on that matter because it's not a corruption matter, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I just, just uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen also <laughs> comments about you know the president, uh, you know, taking that walk and the president saying mm. later on that no, I did not take the walk to show that I was yeah, fit. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that sometimes there is a contrast between what the president actually says? I mean, my colleague talked about mm. hearing directly from the president. You talked about how you know the president can ad adopt a style, and you made reference to President Trump, uh, you know, tweets him <laughs> who likes to tweet quite a bit, but it doesn't take away the fact that he speaks directly to the American people. Can, are, are styles mutually, uh, how will I put it now, are, are they mutually exclusive? exclusive. You know, yeah. some people will say that we can merge the two, can't we? No, no, styles, styles can be mutually exclusive. Mm. Uh, back to school days, stylistic class, what we were told was style is idiosyncratic. It differs from person to person. It's accepted. It's globally accepted. It's taught in, in school that style it differs from person to person. It's idiosyncratic. Mm -hmm. So anybody can uh, adopt a style that he loves it, and is comfortable. The with. next couple of days and months to come, what should we be looking to see and hear from the president? I mean, you're also seeing there controversy coming up as a result of his comments on rule of law. And this is also coming in the light of President Akufo Addo of Ghana saying that, you know, the rule of law must be upheld. Do you think that there is a contrast between what two, no, the two leaders no, said? No, no, no. Don't forget that there is a, also a Supreme Court judgment in this country saying that national security can override personal or individual liberty when necessary. There's a Supreme Court ruling. So the president didn't just uh, uh, manufacture that from the, the fireman's bag of tricks. It's something that is grounded in our laws. Mm. Well, we'll see how, perhaps there'll be a statement to that effect in coming days, <laughs> you know, telling, reminding the lawyers that it's actually a Supreme Court judgment. But yes, we, we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Mm -hmm. Mr. Femi Adishino is a special advisor to the president on media and publicity. The program continues in a moment. Please stay with us.